Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me here on my channel today. I'm going to be painting a Harlequin Ladybird in my nature journal. This is my calendar of firsts. So as I'm working through the year in my Moleskine journal, I'm painting directly into the journal what I see in the natural world around me. This isn't intended to be an instructional video. It's just sharing the way I paint in my journals. I'm going to start with a very light wash of Shadow Violet. And I'm just popping that in here on those spots as they are going to be in an area where the light falls. I'm not sure if you can make it out, but I've just really lightly penciled in a shape here to show me where the light is hitting the body of the ladybird. And then... over the eyes here. Still like the light wash. And I will be going over those later on to make them darker. And then So I'm just taking the shadow violet again and have mixed it with a little raw umber. I'm just painting in the antennae. Legs. There we are. And I also want to use a little of this just around the head. There are actually some little tiny, little tiny markings, just like so. I think that's everything I need in that colour. And then I want a really light wash of the cadmium red and this wash can just go all, all over. Now you can see here why the Moleskine journal isn't always the best journal for watercolour. As you can see, it's resisting. The sizing on the paper is resisting the colour and it can be a little 
hit and miss really. How it will take the colour of some pages you'll find. It just takes the colour, no problem. Other pages will have areas of resisting. I just want to work that in slightly. Okay. Just working the cadmium, the cadmium red. Around the ladybird. So I think I'll just work on this far wing case to begin with, and then I can add work on any shadows, lighter areas as I choose. And you can see again why the Moleskine isn't the greatest um, for watercolour. You can see the paper, it, it's buckling. I mean, to be fair, it isn't a watercolour book. It's never in time, designed to be such. But I've got used to it and I really enjoy using it to record the changing year. So I'm just going all around, all over with the cadmium, just building it up. as the paper is allowing. And uh, I want to start working on dropping the shadows. This is a shadow violet. So I just want to drop some of the shadow violet. And I'm going to, I'm just, I've just dried off my brush quite a bit as the paper is struggling with the amount of. Um, paint I have applied. the blue tones in the shadows so that I just drop a little of the a little indigo into the mix and just work out mm -hmm. 
I want to go back in with the red. Just so we don't lose all of the red tone. I'm going to leave that side alone now. Or oh, leave that shadow alone, should I say. And I'm going to use a little... I'm going to try permanent rose first of all. I'm going to try permanent rose, but I may end up... I'm undecided between permanent rose and quinacridone magenta but I'll just try a little of that here just to liven up the red just try a little, try a little of the magenta as well Okay, I like that. Now I'm going to go over to this side. Okay, now. And. It's building up. A nice creamy wash. Of cadmium red again. Oh, look, I've gone over my pencil line that I have put on to remind me about my shadows and uh, about the light, the lighter colour. Where the light is hitting. So. I just need to change the shape of that slightly. We still have quite a few ladybirds around at the moment. The weather is pretty mild, um, considering we're now into November. We've had some very mild days indeed. We had our first frost on, I think it was Mon Tuesday morning. Uh, the 1st of November. I 
Allez. So again, the sizing is causing a little problem there, but not to worry. So I want to start to work again on the shadows and colour variations in the red. So I'll start again with Shadow Violet. such a handy colour is the Shadow Violet. Um, it's made by Daniel Smith. And it really is a super colour. Especially if you are perhaps working in the field and need to work quickly. And it it splits beautifully, it's granulating colour and it splits. So you do get the different tones in it. I could do it going like that. So we've lost. to soften that edge slightly. That's where our highlight will be. Blending the shadow out slightly into the red and I'm going to add a little variation in the red as well so I'm going to just drop some of the permanent rose. And a little of the quinacridone magenta as well. Really need this line to soften. And let's give this little fellow his own shadow. And then Just 
with the shadow violets. And I just need to allow this to really dry off now. And so we can build up, I can build up the spots once it's completely dry. And um, if I start to work on the spots, they will really bleed if I'm working on them while it's wet. And I'll just fill in the eyes, just work on the detail of the eyes. neutral tint so. I have allowed the paints to dry completely so now I can work the ladybird spots without without having any bleeding issues because I want those spots to be pretty crisp and I'm taking a colour called neutral tint and using point of my brush just to paint in the spots I want the paint to be really thick and creamy. And that'll give a nice opaque consistency, hopefully. And this is a spot has a partial highlight. So I just work over like so. Just let it try off for a moment or two. Um, 
with a clean, clean wet, wet brush. I just want to soften the edge. Slightly. So it isn't a really exact edge. And then going over where the other spots have dried off. Oh, that one was still a little bit too wet. Very nearly done now. The water's where I've softened the edges, just lifted. A little of the um, neutral tint. So I'm just going over that. And then also any of the spots are not quite deep enough. A little indica. And this one too. Come over here. It's all the red. It's lightened up considerably as it has dried. And I do want this to be really. Glossy. Red ladybird. Trying very hard not to catch the spots. I want that to bleed. Going back in with the permanent 
Point Rose there. Oh, I can see a little bleed. <laughs> and then, may as well do the swing as well. I'm starting to lose my lovely shadow. So I think I'll need to go in with a little more shadow colour to drop in. The wind is really getting up here. I don't know if you can hear. And I want to have a little more of the permanent rose in the red. Just brighten that up a little. It seems to have kept quite a decent amount of the shadow, so I'm quite pleased with that. Although I think I'll probably go over with a little more colour just to intensify the shadow. So I'm really having to repaint this ladybird because I've not made the colour strong enough to begin with. And now I'm getting too strong a colour. <laughs> okay, shadow violet. Little bit of indigo. Softening. Shine highlight. Yeah, softening the indigo out a little. There we are, so finally my Lady Bird is completed. I really hope you've enjoyed watching me paint today. Um, it's been really lovely to paint along with you again. Uh, thanks very much for watching. If you pop along to the blog, I will list all the products and colours that I've used for my painting. 
So that's www.raisinglittleshoots.com. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.